Hello everyone, and welcome to our next lecture on memos. So let's begin. Right, so memos is actually um, the short form for the word memorandum, okay, which is a Latin word to mean to be remembered. So basically a memo is uh, a kind of document where you write to remind certain people uh, to, rem uh, to remember certain information or instructions. Now, as compared to business letters and emails, where it is normally um, external communication, where, which means that it is communication between your company and other parties outside of your company. Um, now, to compare with that, memos are actually the internal form of communication within a company. So, within people in the same office or between people in different departments but in the same office or to everyone within the company. So, it is an internal form of communication. And it serves as a historical record. It is a record, okay, a document that records all the company's activities or certain actions or maybe changes in policies or updates on um, different things or changes within the company. And it has to be concise and to the point. Now, so let's look at the format of memos. Uh, previously, what we have done are business letters and emails, and I'm sure you're quite familiar with the format by now. So now the new type of format that we're going to learn is for memos. Uh, to compare that with a letter, well, you no longer need addresses. Mailing and return addresses, you don't need that anymore because it is within the company. And you don't need salutations like uh, we used to do like dear sir or madam, dear mister, dear miss, all that no longer needed. Even the complimentary close where you end with your sincerely at the end and you sign your name is no longer needed in a memo. So it is really concise and straight to the point. Okay, now let's look more specifically into the format. So compared to letters, you don't have a title. You don't write business letters at the top. But in a memo, you have to write memo or memorandum in capital letters. And it has to be centered right in the middle at the top of the page. Now, if it is on a pre-printed memo sheet, which is a, what may probably happen when you work in a company, they already have a fixed format of a memo sheet, right? It's already pre-printed. Um, then you don't have to write the title. It will appear below the company logo and name. But since you are going to write it on a blank piece of paper, you have to write the title, capital letters, in the center at the top of the page. All right? Now for the headings, uh, we learned in business emails that the, the order has to be um, from date to CC subject, right? You're supposed to memorize this. Now in a memo, it's a little different. It starts with to, then from, then date, and the subject. So this is the format that you need to follow for um, the heading of a memo. So in the to section, you need to write the recipient's full name. And you don't need Mr., Miss, Doctor, whatever like you do in letters. You don't need that. Just their full name, comma, and then followed by their title or position. Or it could be a general term. For example, all employees of ABC Cinder and Burhat. Okay? Then from, of course, would be your full name comma, your position, for example, head of uh, sales or whatever, and then you sign your name right next to it. Okay, then in your date, um, just like in letters and emails, it should be spelled out in full to avoid misunderstandings. So you write 7 April 2015 and not 7 slash 4 slash 15. Now, what do I mean by avoid misunderstanding is because in certain countries, this could mean 7th of April, or it could also mean July 4th, 2015. So to avoid that kind of misunderstanding, just write it out in full, just like your letters and emails. In your subject, it should be clear, it should be specific, and in sentence case, exactly like your business letters, right? Okay, now in the body, um, it's a slightly little uh, different format because 
uh, you have to understand that memos can be short and it can also be long. And because you want it to be concise and straight to the point and make it easy for people to read, people who don't have a lot of time, well, you may want to include point forms. So the order is usually uh, introduction or an opening. So you give them all the information that they need to know. Of course, you have to mention the objective and then the necessary background information so that readers are able to understand what the purpose of the memo is. Okay, so who, what, where, when, why kinds of information. Then you can have a summary where you present only the most important points in your memo. And it could be bullet points, you know, in a bullet list so that it's clear and easy for readers to read. Um, there could be a discussion section where you include all the details of the memo, whether it is information or the instructions. And you may also include, for reference, um, previous events you know that is related to the current one or previous actions that have been taken, previous decisions. And that will help readers to understand um, how it has changed, why it has changed, why it has to change, these kinds of things. So this kind of information, extra information, is called the discussion part to help the readers understand why the information or the instructions given right now is important. And then you close right by giving observations. You can make recommendations, suggestions, and propose solutions or actions. What do you want them to do with the information now? Okay, so these are some of the examples. Okay, you have your title in capitals in the middle at the top. Your heading should be in full, not like the example here. This one is a little bit, uh, this is not the format that I want you to do. You have to write it out in full. Okay, your name, your signature or initials. The subject matter must be clear and specific. Now here you must have a line. Draw a line after the heading and then start your memo. Okay, in uh, the body you can have uh, it could be numbered, it could be bulleted, doesn't matter, as long as it, is, as it is aligned left, meaning there's no indentation, no paragraphing. Uh, you have a different paragraph, but you don't have to indent it, go a little bit in. So everything flush to the left, just like your fully blocked letters. Okay, another example here, yeah, title, capitals in the middle. Two, and then you put a general one, like all UAH faculty and staff. You write your name from, comma, and your position, and your signature. Write the date in full, okay, the subject in, sentence case. You have your line, and there's just your memo with bulleted, uh, numbered points. All right. So um, let me just go into the two different types of memos. Basically, there are only two. One is informational because it delivers information. Uh, the other is instructional because it delivers instructions. Okay, so information will be probably um, there's a meeting coming up or there's a seminar or there's changes in some policies, changes in pricing. But instructions would require, all right, here's a problem and these are the solutions, the instructions that we need you to take. Okay, these actions that we need you to do in order to solve that problem. So two types of memos, and I'll go into that. Now for an informational memo, right, it conveys one or more pieces of information. So basically the main uh, focus of the memo is the information, whether it's new or it could be old information that you want to remind your staff or employees, you want to refresh old information, it could be that also. And important is it provide a reason or reasons why the information is relevant to the reader. Now that's important. You can give all the information, but you have to connect it to the reader. Tell the reader or show the reader in the memo, why do I need to know this information? Okay. Um, in terms of organizing it, you should present the most important information first. Okay, and in the memo, make sure they answers all the WH questions like what, where, when, why, okay, and so what. This is the important part. This is why do I need to know this information? So what now? What do I do with it? Okay, so that's the so what question. And you want to end by offering to be of assistance. You say if you need any question, if there are any questions or uncertainties or doubts, you can offer to help. Right, so that's informational. Now, instructional 
you convey more uh, one or more directives or instructions. For example, from now on, you need to do this, you should do that, you have to do this. Okay, so you're calling for and you're expecting certain actions to be taken. Now that is the focus of an instructional memo. Okay, and to make it an effective kind of memo, you need to provide enough information for the readers to understand um, what the instructions are, okay, exactly what they are, who is the important person who issued these actions, when will it take effect, and why these actions need to be taken. All right, you have to explain the importance. Here you are telling people to do things. You have to explain to them at least why they need to do these things. Right. Okay. So it's very important to build the background information or situation to show why those instructions are relevant or important. So you can include into the discussion section to show readers how these instructions that you are giving them will fit into the larger picture. Yes, you're asking them to do that, but how will it benefit them? How will it benefit the company in a larger picture? Okay, your summary section, which is before the discussion actually, can include bulleted directives. So you give the main points in bullet point form, right? Complete sentences, of course, of what you want um, your employees or the people that you're sending the memo to, to do. Okay, and that will be discussed or elaborated on in the discussion section. Okay, so you give the point forms first so that readers are able to see it and understand it clearly. And then you discuss it in the discussion section. Why is it important for the bigger picture? Then, of course, you end by offering to be of assistance and show that, hey, you know, although I'm asking you to do all these things, I'm still on your side. Okay, you still have my support. So, yeah, that's about it, right? And uh, we'll just discuss further and do more practice in class. So, thank you. Bye.